class. Uh, today is a brand new topic. Uh, today we're going to be talking about conditional statements. Now, up to this point, we have discussed uh, basically you know, how to display things on the screen, how to save information, how to take user input uh, and save that so we can use it later. But even still, you know, when our program runs, we can change the information we type in and the program will display different things. But the program itself won't do anything different. Uh, it's still going to follow pretty much the same path. We basically built a straight road, so to speak. Now what a conditional statement does is it allows you to make a choice. Uh, depending on what you type in, I can do this or I can do that. Uh, so if you want a good example, uh, the easiest example is probably a thermostat. Uh, how many of you have, you know, air conditioner or heater on? Now, I crank it to 75, let's say, in this example. Well, what happens if it gets too hot in the side? Well, if the temperature is higher than 75, the air conditioner turns on, right? What if it's lower? Well, it, it turns off, right? So it has a choice, turn on or turn off. If this condition is met, it's greater than the number we set it to, we turn it on. If it's less than that, we turn it off. That's how it keeps it cool. Same is true for the heat, except it does it the other way around. It heats if it's uh, not hot, not warm enough, and if it's you know uh, too hot, it turns it off. Uh, so this gives us a chance to make a decision. Now, the same can be true uh, in a game, for example, if you go to a door and it's locked, well, if you have the key, uh, open the door. Sometimes certain conditions have to be met. If you've talked to a certain person, then this other person will display different dialogue. If you walk to, you know, a certain area, maybe something, you know, you haven't done something yet. So that little trigger, that little Boolean statement, true, false, isn't there. If you've done this already, then, you know, a big explosion occurs or something. Uh, all of those are conditional statements. Uh, and they're pretty much required for every single program you ever write. Uh, you have to make choices and decisions on what to do. Now, this could be as simple as thermostat. It could be dialogue. If I choose <coughs> the first option or the second option or the third option, maybe you have three different things you can say. Well, if I choose A, you know, I want to punch you in the face. Well, whoever you're talking to will react this way. If you choose, here's some money, they'll react a different way. Uh, so you have choices, and that's how those choices are made. Same could be true if you were driving down the street. You had, you could turn left or you could turn right. Well, if you turn left, well, the screen would animate whatever. Uh, if it was a game, animate that direction. If you turned right, it would animate another. Uh, if in real life, well, you would go that way, left or right. Uh, that's roughly the idea behind it. So, let's take a quick look at some simple conditional statements. Now, we're going to keep it very, very simple here. Uh, nothing too complex yet. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make a new project. And I, again, would encourage you to put in the date. Uh, so, you know, whatever the date is, write it out. Like, shoot. If the date is, you know, December or October or whatever the date is, put that in. Uh, again, uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and just write intro ifs because uh, I'm not too fussed about dating it at the moment. So, uh, but make sure it's saved in the right location and go. Now, do our preliminary setup that you'll have to do pretty much every program. There we go. Now, the way if statements work, well, there's actually a couple of different uh, conditional statements. If statements and switch statements, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but let's talk about ifs first. If is basically, you know, if this happens, run this code. That's all it states. Uh, it's just going to check to see if something is true or false. So first, I need some sort of variable. 
uh, could be an integer. And the if statement would say if, all lowercase, let's say number equals zero. Brace, brace. And I told you there would be more braces. And this is, lo and behold, where they are. Now you don't technically have to have the brace to, for this to work, but I will tell you that it does, uh, it's, it's better to have the braces because whatever I put inside here is what's going to run. Uh, if I put something, you know, if I leave the braces off and then I write some code, uh, it's a little ambiguous as to what's going to run. Braces tell you specifically what's going to run. So I put a little end if so I know what that's supposed to end. If I'm missing a brace, it'll say, you know, reach into a file without parsing means I'm missing a brace. Probably a closing brace. Uh, and if I click on each of these, you'll see, well, oh, that ends that. And usually that's a good way to debug and figure things out. If I have too many open braces, you'll see, uh, well, let's do it this way. Let's see, did reach in the file without parsing. Let's see, close, close, there we go. Uh, class interface or enum expected. Uh, so it depends on what your braces are. Now you don't want the end of your program to look like this ever. If your program looks like that, you probably screwed up several things. Uh, so try to mark these as much as possible, and I guarantee you will have a lot less trouble uh, as we go through the course, especially for those who move on to the more difficult Java class. Now, notice that I said if the number and I have this double equal sign. Let's talk about this before we move on. Double equals is basically asking a question. Is this equal, basically. Uh, a single equal is an assignment. This would be like x equals 2, right? This would be like x equals equals 2, and that would give you true or false at the end. This would just set a number to that. Uh, so the difference between 2 and 1 is that right there. Now if I take this off, it's going to tell me I can't do that. It's an int. I can't be converted to a boolean. It means that this is supposed to be double equals whenever we do ifs. And that's one of the common errors people make. Now, the other things we could put in here, everything that this pretty much does, it's either going to be true or false at the end. Is number zero? It is. So what this is going to end up doing is basically just being true. So it's either going to be true or false. If it's true, this runs. If it's false, it skips it. Whatever code you've got in the braces and just goes to the rest of the program. So exclamation point is not equal. Just an exclamation point is not, which can be used in some cases. Uh, of course, greater than, less than. Hopefully most you should know this, greater than or equal, and less than or equal. Those are the ones that typically go in this spot here. So I could say if the number is greater than zero, it is not. If it's less than zero, it is not. Uh, I can say if it is not zero, just change that to a one and that would be true. There's several ways to say the exact same thing. So I'm going to write a little message here. There we go. There we go. Fuzzy pickles. Might not be tasty. I run and it's going to display that. Well, the reason why is because, well, number is zero. That is true. And if I change this up here to one, well, now it's false. So nothing happens. And this is just a simple if, just one if, if it happens, it runs the code, and I can have as many lines in here as I want, hundreds, thousands if I want. Uh, for now, I just have one, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, make it a zero again, and it's true now. And the same is true, I could write if just true, like this, and it's the same thing. Uh, the only problem with if true is, 
well, it's always true, so it's always going to run. There's no reason to have this statement. You can just put this there instead. Now, let's talk about some of the others. If number does not equal zero. And oh, I put the wrong brace. There we go. And it'll usually automatically give you that brace in if. And if you want to expand on that a little bit more, does not equal zero, you can write the whole line so it's a little more uh, noticeable what it's supposed to be ending. But now for every one of these ifs, notice where it kind of defaults put my cursor here. Uh, this is basically five spots over. Anytime you go into a brace, you go over five spots. If you take a look up here, we have our, our main, we have our class, we went over five spots. We have our main, everything goes over five spots. We have our if, inside everything goes over five spots. And that's just basic formatting. If you hit Alt Shift F, it'll line all that up for you in case you didn't do it like you're supposed to and your thing looks like this. Now Java and most programming languages in general don't really care if you do it all in one line like this, but that's just terrible to read, uh, especially if you've got, you know, a few hundred lines of code. Uh, this makes it incredibly difficult. Alt Shift F will automatically kind of line it up like it's supposed to be. Uh, this makes it much easier to see, well, everything that's here is inside this if. I'll just print another message here. Uh, let's see here. Chicken sandwich. Now, which of these is going to run? Fuzzy pickles or chicken sandwich? Well, if you take a look, number is zero. If number is zero, do this. If number is not zero, do this. So I should get the fuzzy pickles unless I come up here and change this. Then I get the chicken sandwich. See? Pretty easy, right? Now, let's make it a little more difficult. Uh, oh, well, let's do it one other way before we add on a little bit to it. I'm going to make a boolean. And we can use any uh, variable we want. Integers, doubles, uh, strings, you have to do something slightly different, which we'll get into later. But uh, booleans, check equals true. Now, if check. Now, I can write if check. Uh, when you're dealing with booleans, equals true. Let's see here. Moo ha 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 ha. And, well, check is true, right? So it should print off. <laughs> they got an extra ha in there. There we go, all fixed. So we take a look. Check's true, if check equals true. Now there's another way I can write this. When you're dealing with Booleans, I don't actually have to write the equals true. Uh, the reason being is, well, if I just write if check, well, check's true, this is basically going to be true, it's going to run. Now if I wanted it to, so if check equals equals true, it's the same as if check in this case. Uh, now if I want it to be false, if check does not equal true, or if not check. This basically means if check's not true. Uh, those are just shorter ways to write it. It doesn't really matter. Whichever way you prefer, you can do it. Uh, it does exactly the same thing. This is usually what the more experienced people are going to do, because uh, it's shorter. Uh, laziness tends to fuel programmers more than anything. Uh, and they, you can be amazed at how many shortcuts a lazy programmer can find. Uh, so they don't have to do as much work. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. It just depends on how they apply that laziness. If they apply that laziness as, you know, they don't do everything right, then it's bad. If they apply the laziness as they try to find the quickest way to get the thing done and make it do what it's supposed to do, then that's, that's good. There's always you know, multiple paths to get to the same answer. Uh, some are longer, some are shorter. This would be shorter, and it's perfectly acceptable. This would be longer, but that's still perfectly acceptable. Now in Java 1, we tend to 
or at least I tend to hope that you get everything done. Uh, I will try to show you some little shortcuts here and there. There's not a lot early on because there's just not a huge variety of ways to do some of the stuff we're doing. Uh, we're learning most of the basics. Uh, once you get further in, however, there are usually two or three different ways to do the same thing. Uh, especially once you get to Java 2, for example. Uh, let's say one of Java 1's programs at the end of the semester, you know, somewhere like 100 lines or so of code. 100-ish lines. Uh, in Java 2, the final project can be every bit of five or 600 lines of code. Now, when I say can be, that means if you went the longest possible way to do everything. The shortest way I've ever done the final project usually that I give Java to is around 90 lines. So they do exactly the same thing, but which would you rather do? Write 90 lines or write, you know, 600? Granted, the 600 is a lot of copy and paste, make some changes. Uh, and the 90 is a lot more complex. But as far as things go, as long as it works, I mean, uh, that's really all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for it to be perfectly pretty. But I would like you to, you know, when I show you, try to think about, you know, how you can do a little bit better. You always want to try to pick up little things here and there and <coughs> improve upon what you've already done. Now, these are your basic ifs. Uh, just basic if, if. Now, this is just one question. I could ask multiple. Uh, this can fail, this can fail, and then this will work. They're all separate questions, basically. Uh, they don't have any connection to each other whatsoever. In the next video, uh, we'll cover ifs with a bit more uh, to them. Uh, we'll have one choice and then another choice or another choice. We'll have a couple of different choices uh, that we'll talk about and how to deal with that. All right, if you have any problems or issues, just let me know.